Rainbows are one of the most beautiful phenomena that we see in meteorology. But the science behind these displays can be even more dazzling. To understand how rainbows form, we begin our journey at the sun, which emits not only light, but the full spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. Light is just the part of the spectrum that can be seen by the eye, and as humans, we see the section between red, which has the longer wavelength, and violet, which has the shorter. We see these colours together as white light. When this white light reaches Earth and strikes a raindrop at an angle, it refracts, or bends, in the water, slowing down and changing direction. All the different colours that make up white light refract at slightly different angles due to their difference in wavelength. Lower wavelengths, like blue and violet, refract at smaller angles than higher wavelengths, like yellow and red. You could say that blue bends best. This effect, called dispersion, causes the colours to fan out inside the raindrop and exit separately at slightly different angles. This means that you wouldn't be able to see all these colours from a single raindrop. You would only see the light of the single colour that exited the raindrop at the angle that meets your eyes. To get a proper rainbow, you need a large volume of rain, millions of raindrops, all being struck by the sun's light at exactly the right angle and dispersing the whole spectrum of colour, red through to violet, as the raindrops fall to earth and the light meets your eyes. Your best chance of seeing a rainbow is on a partly cloudy day, where there are gaps between the rain clouds. This allows the sun's light to get through and reach the raindrops. It also helps if it's the morning or late afternoon when the sun is low in the sky, so that the rain cloud itself doesn't block the light. This is also why we see a rainbow rather than a rain halo, because the angle of the sun means that the bottom of the halo is cut off by the ground. If you were high up in the air, such as in a plane, you would see a rain halo. The last thing to remember when you're looking for rainbows is that you have to be facing the right direction, which is away from the sun, so that the light which reaches the raindrops can reflect back towards you. Now, if you're really lucky, you might get to see a secondary or double rainbow. These form when light travels through the bottom of the raindrop and reflects off the inside of the raindrop one more time than we find with primary rainbows. This means that secondary rainbows appear outside of primary rainbows, have the reverse order of colours and are less bright due to the light lost in the extra reflection. It's also possible, if you're really lucky and in exactly the right place at exactly the right time, to see more than two rainbows at once. This usually happens with rainbows over a large, calm body of water, like a lake, where the sun's rays bounce off the lake and meet the raindrops at a different angle. If you're an especially keen rainbow spotter, you'd be even more lucky to find yourself on Titan, one of Saturn's moons. There, you might see a large methane rainbow form over a sea of methane, which would be truly incredible. Knowing the science behind rainbows doesn't make them any less amazing. Whenever you see one, no matter how many times you've seen one before, you can't help but just stop and look at it for a while. They can be as exciting as a lightning storm, but they're harmless and peaceful. And the way they appear in the calm moments after rain or after a storm, they never stop being beautiful. They definitely are one of the true wonders of the meteorological world.